What's up guys? In this video, I'm gonna give you 10 tips for things that you have to include in your next virtual event. Let's get started. All right, so tip number one is to commit to a single platform. We used to live stream our events and then host a Zoom meeting kind of at the end, trying to fit things together. But today, there's enough virtual event platforms out there to commit to a single one. That will allow you to simplify your messaging and have one great platform for everybody to get the best experience possible. Tip number two is sharing QR codes. QR codes, most people think about them when they use their phone to scan a menu or something like that. Everyone knows how they work, but a lot of people don't realize that you can use them with OBS, with vMix, with Wirecast, in Zoom meetings, in your webinars, in your live streams. You show it up on the screen and you tell people to scan it. It's an easy way for people to access your downloadable content. It could be a digital swag bag, it could be signing up for a giveaway, Use the QR code as an easy way to share information with people and get them what they need easily. All right, number three is to have multiple tracks so that your virtual event attendees can choose their own journey. It puts control back into your attendees, the type of control that we used to have at real networking events, at real conferences. And one easy way to do this is to have a specific area for networking. And you could be called a hallway, it could be called a reunion room, it could just be called a meeting space. And I wanna give credit to Joe Floyd, who is a certified event planner. I'll put his contact information below. He kind of gave us this idea. It's just a really good idea. At the Stream Geek Summit, so many people, they just wanna hang out. They wanna meet with people that they you haven't seen their faces in a while. They like the content, but maybe the content on those webinars they can watch later, but actually catching up with their friends, everyone's in the same place in the same virtual event, that's what they value more. So make space for networking and have a track always there for people to hang out and chat and do that valuable networking. Number four is something I just realized at the Stream Geek Summit. You can have amazing keynote speakers and they can deliver amazing keynotes. But what I realized, and Lon Seidman over here actually helped me understand this, is he put in the extra effort to be part of our networking groups, to get into small breakouts. And if you can ask your speakers up front to spend some time networking with attendees, it really blows their mind, because they're the influencers, they're the subject matter experts, and to get into smaller groups and give your virtual event attendees access to these you know, great speakers and great minds, in small kind of informal networking spaces, it really makes your virtual event that much more special and it's not that much extra effort for your virtual speakers, for your attendees to join these events. So try to, if you're gonna get a keynote speaker and they just jet right after their keynote, you know, that's not gonna add a lot of extra value to your event, but if you ask them to join the breakouts and be part of your event and chit chat and network, it makes a big difference. So all right, tip number five is to bring your event attendees up to the webinar status, up on the live stream. Now you can pre-plan this, and in the Stream Geek Summit, we took four or five people who signed up for the event who we knew had been at our events in the past, and we asked them, hey, during the event, can we upgrade you from a viewer in the webinar to a panelist so you can share your video and your audio and share your experiences, share what's going on, tell people what your best takeaway is. So sometimes your event attendees are actually some of your best evangelists. They're the people who can actually jump on and fill some time in your schedule. So I think it's really important to bring attendees into the event, onto the webinar, up on a platform, and tell them how special they are and allow them to speak to your audience about what the best things they're getting out of your virtual event really is. All right, number six has to do with making your sponsors happy. Most virtual events have sponsors, but this tip could actually apply to a lot of different things. We were talking to our sponsors and what did they really want? They want to meet with people who are interested in working with them, buying their products or their services. And we're like, how are we gonna do this? Because nobody wants to be forced to do anything. We don't wanna force people to sit through commercials from sponsors. And what are we gonna do? 
Well, what we decided to do was to take the eight to 10 sponsors that we had and do a round robin where each one of them can present, you know, one to two minutes about what they do really quickly. And then at the end of that, that segment, which took about 15 to 20 minutes, we let the audience, we let the attendees self-select who they would like to meet with. And so we create Zoom meeting breakout rooms for each sponsor, and we let the audience choose, based on the round robin information, who they'd like to get to know better and trade information with. That worked so well at our event. Every sponsor had people joining their breakout rooms, and it gave control back to the audience, back, back to those virtual attendees, so they're choosing their journey based on what's most important to them. Okay, number seven actually comes from Joseph Pine, the author of The Experience Economy, who helped me think about virtual world cafes. So a world cafe in a networking sense at a small conference or a summit is when you take a large group of people and you break them into small groups and you ask them to discuss a few different important topics kind of help them understand what the talking points are. And instead of having one person speak to a group of 100, now you've got 10 people who can speak in 10 different groups. So as a whole, everyone can be more productive. Again, we used Zoom meeting breakout rooms, but instead of allowing people to self-select rooms, we randomly assigned people to different rooms to kind of shuffle the deck and try to get really good small group conversations going. Now, a tip here is to not do too small of groups. I recommend 10, 12, or 14 or more people per group because you, if you do only six or eight people in a group, you might get a whole bunch of people who are not talkative, who don't wanna push the conversation forward. So do like medium-sized groups. You can broadcast messages into these breakout groups so that you can keep the conversations flowing. And then you can bring everybody back and ask each group or team leader to share the best insights that they've had with the whole meeting as a whole. And that worked out really well at the Stream Geek Summit. And I think it'll work out really well for any type of event that requires networking and sharing of ideas and collaboration. Okay, number eight is one of my secret video production tips. And what it is, is to record behind the scenes videos or any type of short little fun, entertaining video clips on the day of the event. So you're wearing the exact same clothes, you're at the exact same location of the live stream event is happening, and you can use those short video clips to fill in different gaps in your segments or spaces where you might need them. You always, something always happens, there's a speaker that's late, something's going on, you have to go in between one meeting room to the next, things of that nature. It, these 60 second videos, short, maybe one to two minute videos, you can play quickly to keep the audience entertained and kind of transition in between things. So preparing those short videos in advance to be played live, if you shoot them on site the day of or the day before, make it look like it's live, it can really take, you know, kind of like the pressure off and give you those 60 seconds of breathing room. Let me play you one of those clips now so you can see an example of what we did at the Stream Geek Summit. What is so funny? I, I don't get it. <laughs> Taz, what is so hilarious? Um, Paul, I don't think this one's for sharing. <laughs> Wait, did somebody comment something really funny? Yeah, but that might be one we might get in trouble for sharing. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh, let me see. Oh my goodness. No, you're not looking at this. <laughs> oh my gosh, guys, please sure. calm down in the chat room. Mike, <laughs> Mike, do not show that. <laughs> whoa, whoa, whoa. You can't, hey, you can't bring that camera over here. You can't show this. All right. No, no, I'm not gonna, sh just don't show it on a live stream. Guys, chill out out there. My gosh. Appropriate, please. This is the Stream Geek Summit. All right, number nine is to live stream your event. Yes, these virtual events are private. They have an awesome platform that you can use, but I still think in almost every case, you should be leveraging your social media networks, whether that be Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, LinkedIn, and they all have live streaming. So live stream at least some portion of your event. Even if it's just the countdown timer, even if it's just portions of your event, you should live stream it. At the Stream Geek Summit, 
We had, you know, one small little issue regarding uh, we used Eventbrite and then we switched our ticketing to Zoom events and it kind of hurt our registrations. And we had 400 tickets available, but only 350 people signed up. After we started live streaming, people were signing up because they were finding out about the event through YouTube, through Facebook. And we eventually, by the end of the event, sold out every single ticket. And that was because we were live streaming on social media, not because of our emails or anything like that. So you leverage live streaming and the ability to maximize your social exposure online. It will help you even if you need to cut the live stream at some point because you want to keep your keynote private, for example. Okay, my last tip is to survey your audience. You may think you did a great job, your audience might find it differently. Your audience might give you your next best idea. So make sure you survey your audience with a post-event survey. As soon as they leave the, the event, you can show them a survey, gather questions, gather what they think could be better for next year or your next event. Your customers are your best source of new inspiration and direction for your next virtual event, so don't forget that survey. All right, well, those are our tips. Of course, don't forget to subscribe because we've got a whole bunch more great video production and live streaming information, especially for virtual events, coming out soon, and if you have a tip that you could share with our community, please leave it in the comments below. We're gonna to try to gather up everyone's tips and create a really good master list that we can share with everyone on our blog. Thank you for watching this video. Take care, everybody. Bye.